Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and last week we looked at the entry-level iPad, which cost $249, and a lot of people asked me to check out the new iPod Touch after that video, so I picked one up to take a look at what it can do. Now this is pretty much a brand new product from Apple. It's been refreshed for 2019, and it's running with a new A10 Fusion processor, the same chip that is in the iPhone 7 and that iPad we looked at last week. What we're going to do in this review is take a closer look at this iPhone without the phone and see what it is capable of. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this iPod Touch is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is $199 for the 32 gigabyte version. Uh, there's a 128 gig version for 300 bucks and a 256 gig version for 399. Uh, it has a four inch retina display on board, which is quite tiny by today's standards. By comparison, this is my iPhone 10, not the 10 plus uh, stacked up here next to the iPod touch. It is a very small screen. And if you are used to larger screens, this is going to feel super tiny. I was having a hard time typing on it actually. Now the size of this screen is actually the same size as the iPhone 5, 5S and the recently discontinued SE. Uh, so it's something that was on a phone up until recently, uh, but most phones of course now have much larger screens. But it is running the iOS operating system. Uh, but you should note it is not a phone. There is no speaker up here, so you can't hold the phone up to your ear and talk to people. Uh, you can, of course, use headphones like the headphones that come with it that actually plug into the headphone jack here at the bottom, or you could use AirPods or some other Bluetooth headphone and then use FaceTime or Skype or some other uh, voice chat software to talk to people with it. So you can kind of use it like a phone. You just can't hold it up to your ear like one. It does have a front-facing camera here, so you can make some of those FaceTime calls and you can see what the other side of that conversation looks like in this little uh, B-roll clip here. So it can be a good little communicator, but just know it's always going to be a speakerphone unless you plug headphones into it. It also does not have any support for cellular networks, so it's only going to work on Wi-Fi and it supports all of the modern Wi-Fi up to AC. Uh, for ports, we don't have too many. We've got the headphone jack down here. Uh, you also have a lightning connector here for charging and plugging in uh, peripherals that support that connector. And right here, of course, you've got the speaker. And the speaker is pretty good on this, actually. It's good for phone calls, decent enough for music, but of course the headphones will make everything sound a lot better. Uh, nice casing here. It's aluminum. There's a couple different colors available. I think this blue one looks really cool. Uh, this black area here is just for the Wi-Fi antenna. It could normally get blocked by the metal, so they built it into that. Uh, over here, you've got an 8 megapixel rear camera. It's not the best thing in the world. It's at an f2.4 aperture, so it's not great in low light conditions, but the photos it takes are okay. You can see a couple of shots that I took here outside. It will shoot video 1080p at up to 30 frames per second. It has the usual Apple digital stabilization, which does okay, but no optical stabilizer. It'll also do slow motion video at 120 frames per second, 720p. Uh, the front facing camera will record video at 720p at 30 frames per second. So not a great camera, but better than nothing. In fact, better than a lot of the other cheap devices that we have looked at here on the channel from time to time. And there's also a flash built in as well. So you can uh, get a little bit more light on a situation when you need it or just turn it on as a flashlight. Now on the front, you'll notice it just has the old style Apple home button. There is no fingerprint sensor. So when you turn it on and off, you're going to have to type in a passcode every time to access it. And having gotten so used to the fingerprint sensor over the years, that's really become an inconvenience here in using this device. You can really get into some of the other Apple devices a lot faster with that finger push or a facial recognition. Uh, this one does neither of those things. Now this thing is incredibly light, 3.1 ounces or 88 grams. It almost feels fake, like a dummy unit, but it is in fact a fully functional iOS device. Now for battery life, Apple says you'll get about 40 hours if you are playing back music and about seven to eight hours if you are doing video playback. Uh, remember that this doesn't have a cellular network to communicate with, so it doesn't have that radio taxing the battery. So in our testing, we were seeing about that battery life, about seven to eight hours playing back video. Uh, less so though, if you are playing games, 
Uh, so certainly the games will tax it more because it does tax that A10 Fusion processor a bit. And of course, you'll feel it heat up as well. But if you're playing back video and keep the screen brightness down, I think you'll have a pretty good overall battery experience with it. Now, the iPod Touch supports Siri, but it doesn't support voice activation of Siri unless it is plugged into power. So you can't say, hey, you know what, when you're on battery like I am right now. But what you can do is do it the old fashioned way by holding down the home button. What's the weather like in New York City today? And that, of course, will activate all of your Siri commands as usual. So it kind of is an old school throwback to how things used to work before you could just utter the hey word and get everything going. Now, I did find the app experience on here to be pretty nice. It's pretty responsive. Things spring to life pretty quickly here. It's not as fast as what you might experience on a uh, more expensive iPhone, but it does get the job done. Uh, the screen looks nice for web browsing, even though it's a little on the small side. Uh, text is nice and sharp and very readable. Uh, and overall, it's just a nice little performer for doing all of the basics that you might want to do. Of course, it plays music back quite nicely, too, because that's what it's really designed for. So all of your apps should uh, function well. Uh, it also works with video applications. So we can load up YouTube here real quick and see how fast that springs up here. And we can pull up my uh, latest uh, wrap-up video and start playing that back. And you can get everything going there. Everything is tiny, but it's functional. And I think that's what a lot of people looking at this device are looking for, something functional. And the display quality really is excellent here for the price point. Now, the iPod Touch is running with a relatively up-to-date processor. And as a result, you can do some up-to-date tasks with it. Uh, one of the first things I tried was augmented reality. And if you go over to the Mac Pro page on Apple's website using the Safari browser, they have an AR mode here that you can enable, uh, which will let you place that super expensive computer virtually uh, in your environment. So I placed it on top of my kid's little craft table and then walked around it. And as you can see here, it rendered it in very well. It was able to place it in space and render some good detail at a pretty decent frame rate. That was impressive to see on a low-end Apple device. Another thing you can do with this is video editing. Yes, that is true. You can load up iMovie here and uh, drop in some of the clips that you shot using your uh, phone or your iPod Touch or whatever else you have here. And you can even do some more advanced stuff like using the green screen feature. I did a video on this the other day on my Extras channel, but I can go over here and just select green blue screen and knock her right out of the uh, image there. And it works out pretty nicely here when I play it back. I have to do all the other settings here, but you can get a sense as to some of the things that you can do with this. Now you can edit 1080p video on here. Uh, you can bring in 4K clips like this clip of my daughter dancing around, but uh, the output is going to be limited uh, to 1080p. Uh, but you can get it done here, and that is something pretty cool to do on such a uh, lightweight and low-cost device. All right, let's take a look now at some gaming. One of the advantages of the iOS platform is that they've got a ton of great games available. Uh, we started off with Fortnite, and that one ran just fine. The load times were a little on the slow side, but once you got into the game, the frame rate was playable. It was pretty smooth, and overall, it was a good experience. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that because the screen is so small, your hands will be covering up a large portion of the display as you're playing. Uh, that will change soon, though, when Apple uh, releases iOS 13 that will allow you to use Xbox One controllers and PlayStation 4 controllers uh, with your iOS games. I think that will make a big difference, especially for the tiny 4-inch display on this one. Uh, we also loaded up Asphalt 9, which is a driving game, a native iOS game. Uh, looked and played great on here. It's kind of an on-rails driver, but overall, it's a good example of the kinds of games that you can run on this device and have a good experience with. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 2,913. It is performing slightly lower than two other A10 Fusion devices we have tested, including the iPhone 7 Plus and that sixth generation iPad 9.7 that we looked at the other day. But it really is no slouch in the gaming department, and I think overall it will do well, just not as well as an iPhone 7 will. And I think partly why it is running a little slower is that it is a very small form factor, uh, and as such, it doesn't have as much room to dissipate the heat that's generated when you put that processor under load. You'll really feel it get warm uh, while you're playing those games. Not hot, but warm. And it certainly runs a little bit warmer than uh, my iPhone does playing those same games. 
So that's going to do it for this look at the iPod Touch. And the entire time I've been playing with this thing, I've been impressed with its performance, but wondering what the market is for this device. Now, many years ago, uh, these were really popular with younger kids because you had uh, was, was essentially a full-blown smartphone in a package that, of course, didn't have the expensive cellular connection to go with it. That same strategy continues with the iPod Touch today, but there are a lot more choices for parents of young kids these days. I see a lot more kids playing with Nintendo Switches than I do with iPod Touches. Uh, and of course, there's also dirt cheap Android phones that don't perform as well as this, but do offer external storage and of course a lower price tag and phone capability too. But I think what's happening here is that Apple is really trying to get back into the gaming market. They've been making attempts over the years in different ways. Uh, but now what they've got is this monthly subscription service they're launching. It's an all-you-can-eat games platform, similar to what Microsoft is doing. Uh, but they're also adding support for those game controllers. And I think this is something that is small enough and light enough to bolt onto the front of an Xbox or PlayStation controller and not add all that much weight. And this can make a really compelling little gaming platform. And I think Apple might be trying to get back some of that market share that they may have lost to the Switch and that could be where they're going here. But of course, with the Nintendo Switch, you can put an SD card in and have unlimited storage. You don't have that here, and you can spend as much on this as you would on that Switch with the controller. So who knows? We'll have to see what ends up developing here, but it's a rather interesting product that apparently still has buyers because they have been keeping this thing going for as long as the iPhone has been around. Let me know what you think of the iPod Touch down below in the comments and what you think people uh, might want to do with one of these things if they bought one. I'm just curious. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.